They were solving radical equations in section 6.6. .6. So the key here is that you must get radicals by themselves. Then you're going to raise your radical to the reciprocal power. That's how you're going to get rid of that particular power. And the other key for today is that you must always check all of your solutions. There are going to be situations where you will have an extraneous answer, and you're not going to know that until you check all of your answers back into the original question. So that is part of the whole process. It will be worth a point of the entire process. So without the check, you'll lose um, a point or a half a point on a particular equation. All right, so on this first one, we're doing, let's put this up here, we're doing the square root of 5x minus 9 equals 11, and then the second one over there, 7x to the 3 fifths equals 56. So we're going to start with number 1 over here. What you want to do is try to get the 5x minus 9 to be out from underneath the square root. So the way we do that is to square both sides. When you square both sides, the radical and the 2 will cancel each other off. So that was the step that I put right here. We're going to square both sides. The radical and the 2 will cancel each other off. You're left with just 5x minus 9 equals 121. And then you just have a simple equation to solve. Add your 9 to both sides. 5x equals 130. Divide by 5, and you get x equals 26. But how do we know for sure that x equals 26? We need to go back in and check our answer. You need to put your 26 back into the original, way back up here, where you see your x term. 5 times 26 minus your 9, does that really equal 11? 130 minus 9, does that really equal 11? Square root of 121, yes, 11 equals 11. So that one does check. Okay, next one. We're looking at... 7x to the 3 fifths equals 56. Now for this one, you always want to do something to get rid of the, any plain number in front of the variable first. So the first thing that has to happen here is to divide out the 7. That leaves you with just x to the 3 fifths equals 8. So here's what I meant when I said raise it to a reciprocal power. If you have a, a variable raised to a fractional power, up it again, raise it again to that a reciprocal power, but remember to do that on both sides. Power to a power property, that's a multiply. Your 3 fifths, 5 thirds, those both cancel each other off. That leaves you with just your x on the left hand side, and then x to the 5 thirds. Now we're using what we had in the beginning of this chapter where we're splitting apart the power. x to the 5 thirds would be x to the 1 third and then raised to the fifth. X, uh, 8 to the 1 third is 2, and then 2 to the fifth is 32. So we think our answer is going to be 32. But we're not going to know that until we check. So 32 again, going back in here to the original, right there, 7 times 32 to the 3 fifths. 32 to the 1 fifth, do that first. 32 to the 1 fifth is 2, then we'll have to do 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, and then 7 times 8, yes, we get 56 equals 56. So the answer of x equals 32 is correct. Make sure when you're answering those, don't get down here and say that the answer is 56. Remember that the answer that we were checking was 32. Back on this one, the answer that we were checking was x equals 26. The answer to this is not 11. The check produces uh, a correct statement of 11 equals 11. All right, so now you need to do this one. x minus 4 raised to the 2 thirds, that whole thing, subtract 9, is supposed to equal 16. So now you can put the video on pause. Work this one yourself and see if you can come up with the same answer. Okay, so here's what I did. First I added 9 on both sides. I got x minus 4 to the 2 thirds equals 25. Then I upped it again to the reciprocal power, 2 thirds, and then raised it again to the 3 halves. That will cancel out my 2 thirds, 3 halves. But remember to raise it to the 3 halves on the other side as well. That leaves me with x minus 4 equals 25 to the 3 halves. 25 to the 3 halves is 25 to the 1 half, which is 5, and then cubed is 125. Then I just have to add 4 to both sides, and I should get x equals 129. But I don't know that for sure until I check my answer. 
I take 129, put it back into the original of x minus 4. So it's going right here. 129 minus 4 to the 2 thirds minus 9 equals 16. 129 minus 4 is 125 to the 2 thirds minus 9. Does that equal 16? 125 to the 2 thirds is 5 squared, which is 25, minus 9, and then 16 equals 16. Check. All right, on this next one, let's draw the curtain. Square root of x minus 6 equals x minus 8. Now, you notice on this one, we've got x's that appear on both sides of the equation. So the first thing we're going to do here is get rid of this radical. And the way we do that is to square both sides. So I'm going to write the square root of x minus 6, square the left. I've got to square the right as well. When I square the left, the x minus, or the radical sign will cancel off with the square, leaving me with just x minus 6. But then I've got eight, x minus 8, the whole quantity squared. Now remember when you square that, please do that properly, x squared minus 16x plus 64. It's not just x squared plus 64. Now I'm going to have to get this x and the negative 6 to the other side, so the whole thing is set equal to 0. Subtract your x, both sides. Add your 6, both sides. 0 equals x squared minus 17x plus 70. This is now factorable. 0 equals x minus 10, x minus 7, and then take each one out and solve them. I get x equals 10 and x equals 7. But I don't know if these are both going to work until I go back in and check them. So we're going to check the 10 first. 10, remember, is going to go back up into the original. And we go back way up here, individual, original, and put it in both places where I see the x. Square root of 10 minus 6, does that equal 10 minus 8? 10 minus 6 is 4. 10 minus 8 is 2. Square root of 4, does that equal 2? 2 equals 2. Yes. So 10 works. And then I have to check the 7. Next one. Checking the 7. Square root of 7 minus 6. Does that equal, I don't know, 7 minus 8. 7 minus 6 is 1. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. The square root of 1 is 1, but 1 does not equal negative 1. So 7 is an extraneous solution. I'll cross off my 7, and the only answer I have to this one is x equals 10. And again, I wouldn't know that unless I checked them. So a question like this could possibly be worth one point for all of the mathematical work, one point for checking the 10, and one point for checking the 7, which gives you the extraneous. So this could be a three-point question, and without checking, you could lose two points out of that. So please remember, you have to check every single time. All right, on this next one, square root of x plus 6 equals square root of 11 minus x, and then subtract 3. This is the longest one we've got, and hardest in terms of square rooting both sides. Okay, so we're going to have to square root. We're going to put a great big square on this side, great big over the entire thing square on this side. On the left side, the radical and the 2 will cancel. That leaves me with x plus 6. But on the right hand side, we need to do this whole thing squared. So I'm going to write this twice. It might be easier to see. Square root of 11 minus x minus 3 times another square root of 11 minus x minus 3. FOIL gives me square root of 11 minus x times another square root of 11 minus x is just 11 minus x. Here is negative 3 square root of 11 minus x. Underneath here is another negative 3 square root of 11 minus x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. Like terms, I've got 11 plus 9, there's 20. 20 minus x minus, these are like terms, there's negative 6 square root of 11 minus x. That equals x plus 6. So I'm getting there. I now need to move the 20 to the other side, the negative x to the other side. So I'm trying to isolate this piece by itself. So I'll subtract my 20. I'm going to add in x. 
I should now have 2x minus 14 equals negative 6 square root of 11 minus x. All right, we're getting there. Now we're going to try to do something to get rid of this radical. So I'm going to square both sides again. So I'm going to big square here, big square here. 2x, the quantity squared, would be 4x squared. Inside here is negative 28x, but I need double, so that's negative 56x. And then negative 14 squared, that's 196, equals negative 6 squared is 36, and then the radical and the square cancel each other off, 11 minus x. Okay, we're still getting there. Like terms, 4x squared minus 56x plus 196 equals 36 times 11. How much is that? I don't know. 396 and then minus 36x. We can add our 36x to the other side. 4x squared minus 20x. Then we're going to subtract 396 from both sides. Negative 200 equals 0. We now need to factor that. We should have a 4 that can come out of the whole thing. 4x squared minus 5x minus 50 equals 0. That should be factorable. I'm going to go to the next page. We've got 4, it was x squared minus 5x minus 50. This is factorable. Two numbers for negative 50 that add to negative 5. We've got x minus 10 and x plus 5 equals 0. Take each guy out, I should have two solutions of 10 and negative 5. But do I know for sure that they work? So now I need to check my answers. I'm going to put the original back up here again so we know what we're looking at. Square root of x plus 6, does that equal square root of 11 minus x, and then subtract 3. All right, now we need to check both of our answers, so let's try the 10 first. We're checking the 10. Square root of 10 plus 6, does this equal square root of 11 minus 10, and then subtract 3. This is the square root of 16. That will give me a 4. Square root of 11 minus 10 is 1. Square root of 1 minus 3. 1 subtract 3. Does 4 equal negative 2? That answer? No. So 10 is out as a solution. And then we'll go to our last number to check. Uh, this time we'll try negative 5. Square root of negative 5 plus 6. Does that equal square root of 11 minus, be careful here, minus negative 5, and then subtract 3. Square root of 1, does that equal plus plus, change change, square root of 16 minus 3. 1 equals 4 minus 3, 1 equals 1, yes. So we do only have one solution on this one, negative 5. So that question, that's the hardest one you've got when you have, uh, let me back up a second here, when you have radical on the left, radical on the right, plus something else going on outside of that, not in the radical, that's usually a squaring both sides twice type of a problem, much more difficult to solve. All right, you can now go in and do your Skyward online quiz for section 6.6, .6, Solving Radical Equations.